Senate in the first regular session of the 19th Congress is hereby called to order. May we recognize our distinguished colleague from the city of Makati, um, Senator Nancy Binay, to lead us into prayer. Butihin at mapagpalang Diyos, pinupuri at pinapasalamatan ka namin sa panibagong araw na inyong ipinagkaloob. Naniniwala po kami na patuloy ninyo kaming binibiyayaan ng sapat na lakas para harapin anumang hamon ang aming pinagdadaanan. At ngayong buwan ng mga puso, dalangin po namin na patuloy nyo kaming turuang magmahal gaya ng inyong pagmamahal sa amin. Tulungan mo po kaming laging ipamalas ang inyong pagmamahal at laging tumayo kasama ng mga dukha, api, at walang kakayahang ipagtanggol ang kanilang mga sarili. Gabayan niyo din po kami sa pagpapatuloy ng aming sesyon at naway patuloy kaming manindigan para sa katarungan, kapayapaan, at pagkakaisa. Pagpalain niyo po ang aming bansa at dalangin po namin ang isang kinabukasang puspos ng pag-asa at ginhawa. Ang lahat ng ito, aming hinihiling sa ngalan ng Ama, Anak, at Espiritu Santo. Amen. Amen. Secretary, please call the roll of members. Roll call of members. The Honorable Senator Angara. Senator Binay. Senator Cayetano Alan. Senator Cayetano Pia. Senator De La Rosa. Senator Ejercito. Senator Escudero. Senator Estrada. Senator Gachelian. Senator Go, Senator Montiveros, Senator Lapid, Senator Legarda, Senator Marcos, Senator Padilla, Senator Pimentel, Senator Poe, Senator Revilla, Senator Tolentino, Senator Tulfo, Senator Villanueva, Senator Villar Cynthia, Senator Villar Mark, the Senate President. With 20 senators present, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. Majority Leader. Mr. President, we have a full house today, and so before we uh, proceed, may I uh, be allowed to just uh, acknowledge some guests from the gallery. Uh, we have with us... Uh, the Executive with, Secretary. The He's Executive right. Secretary himself, um, Secretary Luke uh, Bersamin, we also have with us SAP, uh, a special assistant to the president, Anton Lagdameo. We have with us uh, Mr. President, DTI Secretary Pascual, Labor Secretary Laguesma, Benny Laguesma. Uh, ELLO Secretary, uh, ELLO Secretary, Mendoza. Secretary Mendoza, and the rest of the uh, uh, our. Uh, our uh, friends from the executive, they are all here in support of uh, the Senate, and we'd like to acknowledge them, uh, Mr. President. Yes, they're here in support of the RCEP measure, uh, my dear colleagues, and we thank them for their time uh, being here. We also have undersecretaries, I believe, from the agriculture sector. We have Secretary Ben Jokno, who just entered as well. Yes, Mr. President, uh, Secretary Jokno. Dokna is also here with us, uh, Mr. President. We welcome them, Mr. President. Together with uh, Mayor Alfredo Schello of uh, Irosin uh, Sorsogon, uh, guest of our dear Senate President, um, also the swimmer and the medalist in the 1962 and 1966 Asian Games, Mr. Hailid Said, guest of uh, Senator uh, Bongo, and a uh, guest from uh, Senate. Guest of Senator Jingo Estrada from Japan, Shinya Ito, Marilu Santos, Mark Domingo, Eric Itagawa, and Noah J. Miranda. Also with us, Mr. President, is our former colleague, the uh, distinguished gentleman from the Lone District of Pasig, our dear friend, Congressman uh, Romanti Romulo, Mr. President. To all our compatriots and fellow Filipino public servants and our kababayans, Welcome to your Senate. This is your Philippine Senate. To our friends from Japan, konnichiwa. Doro, domo arigato gozaimasu for visiting the Senate. Mr. President, at this juncture, I move that we dispense with the reading of the journal of the 49th session 
Tuesday, February 14, 2023, and considered the same as approved. There be no objection to the motion. Motion is approved. Mr. President, at this juncture, I move that we proceed with the reference of business. Without an objection from my colleagues, we ask the secretary to proceed with the reading of the reference of business. Message from the House of Representatives. Letter from the House informing the Senate that on 6 February 2023, it passed the following House bills in which it requests the concurrence of the Senate. House number 1270, instituting policies for the protection and promotion of the welfare of workers of, or independent contractors in the film, television, and radio entertainment industry. To the Committees on Labor and Employment, Public Information, and Mass Media. 6571, providing additional guidelines in the acquisition of right of way, site, or location for national government infrastructure projects amending for the purpose RA10752. The Committees of Public Works, Justice and Human Rights, and Ways and Means. 6683, promoting inclusive and sustainable productivity growth, repealing for the purpose RA6971. The Committees on Labor and Employment, uh, Ways and Means. 6716, mandating the establishment of fisher folk settlement areas by the DA, Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, Department of Environment and Natural Resources and Local Government Units, amending for the purpose Section 108 of RA 8550 as amended by RA 10654. Further to committees on agriculture, urban planning and housing and resettlement. 6717, suspending the implementation of the use of mother tongue as the medium of instruction for kindergarten to grade three, provided under section four of RA 10533. <clears throat> to the committee on basic education. 6718, providing protection and incentives to freelance workers. The commission on labor and employment, ways and means. Additional reference of business. Bills on first reading. Senate number 1876, promoting open access in data transmission and providing additional powers to the National Telecommunications Commission, Senator Lapid. To the Committee of Science and Technology and Public Services. 1877, establishing a green public procurement program for all branches of government, Senator Lapid. Committee of Sustainable Development Goals and Futures Thinking and Finance. 1878. An act to designate the fourth day of November of every year a special non-working holiday in the province of Quezon to be known as the Hermano Puli Day, mandating concerned agencies to conduct events during its observance. Senator Lapid. Committee on Local Government. 1879. Declaring the Halamanan Festival of the Municipality of Giginto, province of Bulacan, a major tourist attraction and declaring for that purpose January 22 of every year a special non-working holiday in the Municipality of Giginto and for other purposes, Senator Villanueva. To the Committee on Local Government. 1880, creating programs for incarcerated parents and their children, Senator Tulfo. Committee on Women and Children, Justice, Human Rights, and Finance. 1881, creating the Media Arts University of the Philippines, Senator Tulfo. Committee on Higher Technical and Vocational Education, Public Service, Public Information, rather, and Finance. 1882, mandating immediate response to emergency service requests related to critical infrastructure and for other purposes, Senator Tulfo. Committee on National Defense and Peace and Reconciliation. 1883, institutionalizing a med national medicine system in the Philippines, Senator Tulfo. Committee on Health and Demography and Finance. 1884, mandating the installation of audible traffic signs with push buttons for the benefit of persons with disabilities, the elderly and pregnant women, Senator Tulfo. Committee of Public Works, Social Justice and Finance. Resolutions, proposed Senate Resolution 481, congratulating and commending the De La Salle University das Marinas for winning the Microsoft Showcase School Biggest Impact Award for Asia, Senator Lapid. To the Committee on Rules. For a two, congratulating and commending Johan C. for being hailed as the 2023 Asia's Best Female Chef of the Year, Senator Lapid. To the Committee on Rules. For a three, expressing the Philippine Senate's condolences to the governments of Turkey and Syria on the death toll caused by the 2023 Turkey-Syria earthquake, calling the Philippine government to provide aid and undertake an information campaign for earthquake preparation and response, Senator Pimentel III. To the Committee on Rules, suspend session for one minute.
President, I move that we uh, proceed with additional reference of business. Is there an objection? There being none. Motion is approved. Secretary may now read the additional reference of business. Second additional reference of business resolution. Proposed Senate Resolution Number 484, calling for an inquiry in aid of legislation into increased logistics, logistics costs in the Philippines caused by rising port fees and charges. Senator Antiveros. Committee of Public Services. Committee Report. Committee Report 29 by the Committee on Foreign Relations on Proposed Senate Resolution Number 485, entitled Resolution Concurring in the Ratification of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, recommending its approval without amendments. Sponsors, Senator Subiri and Legarda. To the calendar for ordinary business. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, at this juncture, I move that we transfer from the calendar for ordinary business to the calendar for special orders. Committee Report Number 29 on Proposed Senate Resolution Number 485. This pertains to the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. Is there objection? There be none. Motion is approved. Mr. President, I move that we consider Proposed Senate Resolution Number 485 under Committee Report Number 29. Is there an objection? There being none. Motion is approved. Consideration of Proposed Senate Resolution Number 485 is now in order. With the permission of the body, the secretary will read only the title of the resolution without prejudice to inserting into the record the whole text thereof. Resolution concurring in the ratification of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, to sponsor the measure, may we recognize no other than our distinguished Senate President, Senator Juan Miguel Subiri, as co-chairperson of the Subcommittee of Foreign Relations on the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership to deliver his sponsorship speech. Our Senate President Juan Miguel Subiri is recognized to deliver, to deliver his sponsorship speech. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, my dear colleagues. Thank you very much, Majority Floor Leader, Mr. President. Mr. President, before I begin my sponsorship, I want us all to take a moment to recognize all our key agencies that are in the chamber today in support of this measure. We have with the Office of the President, represented by Executive Secretary Lucas Bersamin, who's with us. S SAP, uh, Special Assist Assistant to the President, Anton Lagdameo. We have with us Yusek Roy Cervantes, as well as the DTI Secretary, led by Secretary Alfred Pasqual. Yusek Seferino Rodolfo, and her Chief Negotiator, Asek Alan Jepti. Trade Negotiator, rather. The Department of Finance, by Secretary Benjamin Jokno, straight from the airport, Mr. President, Amoy Haneda. Pasha. Haneda Airport. The Department of Labor and Employment, Secretary Benvenido Laguesma, and Yusek Felipe Egargo. The Department of Agriculture, by Yusek Agnes Miranda, and he's arriving uh, very soon. Uh, Yusek Domingo Panganiban, as he's just in a meeting, finishing a meeting with the president. Asek Arnel de Mesa, Asek Noel Padre, and Asek Res Esto Perez. The Department of Foreign Affairs by Yusek Jesus Domingo, Yusek Antonio Morales, Yusek Edgardo de, Vera, de Vega, and Asek Bernie Candolada. Bureau of Customs. Uh, Commissioner Buenvenido Rubio and Assistant Commissioner Vincent Philip Maronilla. The Tariff Commission by, head, by Commissioner Marisa Paderon. The DTI Bureau of Investments, Executive Director Corazon Dichosa. And NEDA, a National Economic Development Authority, Yusek Edilion. And of course, our PLLO Secretary, Dong Mendoza. Mga kababayan, mga kapatid ko dito sa Senado. Bung buo po ang suporta ng ating gobyerno sa Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. Full house, full support. Ika nga ng ating mga kaibigan dito. Full support. Of course, matagal na pong suportado ng gobyerno ang RCEP. At concurrence na lang ng Senado ang hinihintay po nito. This is precisely why I stand here today, Mr. President, to present RCEP, the RCEP Agreement for approval and concurrence of the Senate. Una na po itong sumalang sa Senado ng 18th Congress by our dear minority floor leader who ably handled all the hearings 
and the debates on the floor. Senator Coco Pimentel. At narito muli tayo, narito muli tayo, and I believe that with the benefits of time, and more importantly, additional consultations with concerned sectors, we have a good opportunity to evaluate RCEP anew. Magandang balikan natin ang RCEP ngayon, especially since we can now observe how well our fellow RCEP signatories have been faring since all greenlit the implementation of agreements in their countries. <laughs> Mr. President, ayoko pong mapag-iwanan tayo. Ayoko pong tignan tayo ng ibang bansa bilang isang isolationist or isang North Korea dito sa region na sarado sa malayang kalakalan. Ayoko pong pigilan ang paglago ng ating industriya at pag-unlad ng ating mamamayan. But it should be wrong to simply argue that we must join it because others did. We must not simplify or simply be swept by the bandwagon. Rather, we should join out of the belief that it will create a snowball effect on jobs for our people and markets for our produce. So, Mr. President, my dear colleagues, I truly feel it is imperative that we consider the agreement anew. And what best way to go about this by stripping RCEP back down to the basics so we can try to understand what it can really do for our country. The RCEP agreement, Mr. President, my dear colleagues, is the largest regional free trade agreement in the world. Maybe we can increase the slide. Pwede pong litan na lang ang picture ko dyan at lakihin ang slide. Maybe we can ask them para mabasa ng iba. Kasi ako hindi ko din mabasa. <laughs> Mr. President, as I mentioned, it is the largest regional free trade agreement in the world. A critical policy tool to strengthen our participation in the global economy. At its core, the agreement is really about establishing, establishing clear, stable, predictable rules in doing trade and investments in the region. So it will be more convenient and competitive for our businesses and investors to be integrated in the global economy. Again, may I ask uh, Prib na palakihin ng slides para mabasa po nila ang slides na ito. Wala po po kaming tulog at mga gumawa ng slides na ito, kawawa naman po at para makita. Yan, nababasa na po. Let me repeat. It will make it clear and stable or it will be a clear, stable, predictable rules in doing trade and investments. That is why in RCEP, we have chapters and provisions covering trade and goods, rules of origin, customs procedures, trade facilitations, sanitary, phytosanitary measures, standards and technical regulations, conformity procedures, trade remedies, services, investments, intellectual property, e-commerce, competition, small and medium enterprises, economic and technical cooperation, dispute settlements, among others. Kaya nga, comprehensive agreement talaga ito. In other words, RCEP agreement covers almost all aspects of the economy. Hindi lang po ito tungkol sa reduction or elimination ng tariff rates o pagbubukas ng merkado sa importasyon, talagang all-encompassing po ang coverage ng RCEP. Thus, as we examine this agreement, we have to appreciate it in its broader context. Let me emphasize, my dear colleagues, as a premise that in a globalized economy, the Philippines cannot afford to isolate itself from the rest of the world or even send a signal to that effect. As a policy, we want to attract more investments. That is why we recently passed through our colleagues here in the Senate, the Foreign Investments Act, the Public Services Act, the Retail Trade Liberalization Act. We need to provide incentives. So we passed the CREATE law so that investors would come to the Philippines, do business, generate jobs, and eventually fuel our economy. Today, production of goods and services have already been revolutionized by international trade. Goods and services are no longer either made in the Philippines or made in China, in that one wins when it produces products that are exported to another country or loses when it imports products into their country.
In a global economy, products are put together in one country from many components sourced in other countries and then sold all over the world. As a result, vastly fewer products are solely made by any one country. Tingnan niyo yung mapa po. Yan yung ating trade agreement, RCEP. Let me say this. This is what RCEP is all about. And if you look at the slide, it provides a stable platform for countries in this region that they can optimize participation in the global economy and the global value chain. Yung nakikita po niyan, mga kababayan, that is 30% of the global economy. That is 30% of our population, and that is of the global population, and that is 30% of GDP of the world. Thus, when the Philippines signed onto this agreement, almost all business organizations, industry associations, foreign chambers manifested strong support to the country's immediate ratification. To name a few, we have the support of the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the largest business organization in the country, the Australia New Zealand Chamber, Filipino Banana Growers and Exporters Association, Confederation of Wearable Exporters in the Philippines, this is our garments facts sector, Can Sardines Association of the Philippines, Federation of Philippine Industries, Garment Business Association of the Philippines, IT and Business Process Association of the Philippines, Japanese Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Joint Foreign Chambers, a coalition of American Chambers of Commerce in the Philippines, Australia New Zealand Chamber, Can Canadian Chamber, European Chamber of Commerce in the Philippines, Korean Chamber, and Pamuri, Philippine Association of Multinational Companies Regional Headquarters Incorporated, and the Philippine Exporters Confederation. Even international bodies such as, and organizations such as the Asian Development Bank, World Bank, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development have recognized the value and importance of RCEP, especially in our post-pandemic recovery. Sadly to date, the Philippines, and let me repeat, the Philippines is the only RCEP signatory state that has not yet ratified the RCEP agreement. And businesses and foreign investors are already getting wary with the consistency of our trade and info investment policy directions. Siguro naman, mga kapatid ko dito sa Senado, hindi naman siguro tayong pinakamagaling sa kanila lahat. Ito po yung mga bansa na katulad ng ating mga kababayan sa region, na Asia, ASEAN, plus Japan, North, uh, South Korea, uh, New Zealand, Australia, and China. So, my dear friends, let me give you a little background. The RCEP took effect in January 1, 2022. I want to show you, my dear friends, that after a quick review and progress of its implementation over a year sa ASEAN, that our friends in ASEAN are already reaping the benefits of this RCEP agreement. And don't take it from me. Baka sabihin nyo, si Mix, bolero yan. O baka yung DTI, bolero yan. Ipapakita po namin sa inyo sa screen. Ha? Kaya nga, eh sabi ko, Mas maganda, sabi ko sa ating mga DTI, ipakita natin ang nailalabas sa ibang bansa. For example, Vietnam's exports to RCEP countries reached 100.48 billion US dollars. Ah, let me repeat, ah. for 2022, they increased by 108.48 billion dollars in 2022, up 16% from the previous year. Many of these gains are from exports of agricultural products. Seafood exports for Vietnam particularly increased by 34% in the first few months of 2022 upon joining and ratifying the RCEP, with RCEP countries accounting for 64% of total export. Fruit and vegetable exports to, to China, papuntang China po ito, surged 30,000 tons in December last year. Among these fruits and vegetable products was durian. And in just one month, Vietnam earned nearly $50 million from exporting durian to China. This is one product where the Philippines should have a competitive advantage. Amini, Senator Bato, Ako, uh, Senator Bongo, si Senator Coco Pimentel na taga Mindanao, durian ang napakarami sa amin and we can export this immediately to, to China. 
With this, in this one product where the Philippines should have a competitive advantage, which is not being utilized as we continue to withhold participation of RCEP. It is Cambodia, Thailand, and Vietnam that's sending durian from uh, to, to these countries. And mas masarap po in durian namin, uh, with due respect. Also, Thailand and Cambodia likewise reported gains in total trade with RCEP countries of 7.1% and 4% respectively. Thailand and Cambodia. Thailand's exports to RCEP countries totaled 140 billion US dollars in 2022. As for Cambodia, its garments industry, yung pagkagawa po ng mga damit for export, has been making money since the entry into force of RCEP. In total, its garments industry earned 10.25 billion from exports in the first three quarters of 2022. This represents a 24% year-on-year growth. 24% increase, mga kababayan ko, mga kapatid ko. This is an industry where the Philippines hopes to regain a comparative advantage to RCEP. Di ba magaling po tayo dyan? We used to have a thriving garments export. Meanwhile, Malaysia is forecasting a 9.3% growth in exports in 2023, with RCEP's full entry into force being one of the factors. Definitely, mga kapatid, this development is a clear indication of RCEP's positive effects. We cannot afford to be a fence-sitter while witnessing other ASEAN member states reaping the benefits of this agreement. Not only will we be put to advantage, but we will also be missing out on a lot of opportunities. Let me show you some advantages of RCEP that we are missing out as we further delay our participation. Una, mga kapatid, the fact that it's the largest free trade area in the world, composed of 15 parties, is in itself an advantage. Tignan po yun yung mapa. Imagine you can source raw materials and intermediate goods from these 15 countries, process the products in the Philippines, and export these products back to RCEP. Ha? Sana makuha po ninyo lahat. Kung meron po tayong pabrika sa Pilipinas at gusto po tayong gumawa ng uh, isang produkto dito, pero ang raw materials ay kukunin po natin sa RCEP countries. Zero tariff po yan pagpasok dito sa atin at paglabas din at papasok sa kanila ng finished product, zero tariff. While it is true, my dear friends, because this is an argument of our some of my dear colleagues, while this is true that we have already existing FTAs, the benefit of a wider accumulation cannot be enjoyed in these FTAs. For example, FTAs, free trade agreement. Huh? As an example, in RCEP, Philippine garments manufacturers will be able to source fabrics from China or anywhere in the world, export it back to Japan at a preferential tariff. This is not previously possible because under the rules of origin, huh? rules of origin, mga kapatid, under the ASEAN-Japan Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or AGCEP, ito may ASEAN-Japan Economic Partnership. Yan yung ating FTA with Japan. And the Philippine-Japan Economic Partnership Agreement, and JEPEPA. Yan ang JEPEPA. It restricts Philippine exports to sourcing fabrics only from Japan or ASEAN countries. Kaya kung gusto po natin mag-export para sa Uniqlo, Di po tayo pwedeng uh, gawin yun unless we get our fabrics from Japan under the existing agreement. These strict rules is not reflective of all sourcing patterns and requirements of Philippine garment manufacturers. Also under RCEP, the Philippines was able to secure zero tariff rates for garments compared to 5% tariff rate under existing ASEAN-Korea free trade agreement. Right now po, 5% ang garments natin pag pinasok natin sa Korea. But under this RCEP, zero tariff na po. We can send our garments to Korea at zero tariff. Thus, sending export po yan, Ma'am Ma Si, papunta ng Korea yan. Zero percent. Pagdating sa Korea, wala po tayong taxes na babayaran. Thus, we can sell cheaper. Mas mura po ang mabibenta natin. Thus, if the country 
continues not to be party to the RCEP agreement. Ha? Makinig po tayo lahat. Garments manufacturers in Cambodia, in Laos, in uh, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, and other ASEAN member states will have a comparative advantage against our own garments manufacturers. Lugi po tayo. Hindi po natin may bebenta na mas mura. RCEP also works in favor of our fishing canning factories as they can globally source fish and export them to RCEP regions. Currently, some Philippine tuna canneries source the raw material from non-RCEP parties. Marami po tayong kaibigan na may fishing industry. They get their fish now. Or Norway. Under the FDA with Japan, they are unable to get preferential tariff because of their sourcing pattern. So their exports pay high duty imports. With RCEP, their exports to Japan will now qualify for preferential tariffs. So these are from the provinces of General Santos, Zamboanga City, Palawan, yung mga high fish producing areas natin. Magkakaroon na sila ng advantage with this. Our farmers and producers of papaya and durian, as I mentioned earlier, will also benefit because they can now export these products to South Korea at the preferential arrangement. That is from 24%. Yan yung ASEAN, yung ASEAN Korea Free Trade Agreement, ha? 24% to 0% in 10 years under RCEP. So imagine kung hindi tayo sasama dito, edi 24% taon-taon ang babayaran nating taripa para sa ating mga prutas na papasok po sa Korea. Na hindi nilang pwedeng gawin at uh, katulad ng papaya at durian, they cannot produce it in Korea. So at least we have a chance that within 10 years, 10, 0% ang taripa. Same also with our farmers and producers of coffee because they can now export these products to Japan at a preferential arrangement that is from 10 to 12% in the ASEAN-Japan economic partnership to 0%. Pababa po yan. That's cumulative. Pababa ng 1%, 2%, 3% in 16 years under RCEP. Ayun po. Sa Dabao, masarap ang kape. They have coffee beans in Dabao. Bukid non. Cordilleras, sa pabaw. Cavite, katabi ko, as a very good coffee production uh, industry, including Batangas. So, my friends, another advantage is the manufacturers of mixtures of preserved fruits. Ito po, fruit cocktail, fruit juices, yung mga pomelo juice, ano pa, carrot juice, yung mga mango juice, will enjoy an improved concession in Japan that is from 5% to 9%. Now existing, 5% to 9% to 0% in 2016 under RCEP. Eh kung hindi tayo mag a po, ay lahat na Thailand na lang sila bibili. Lahat na, wala na po tayong chance na makapasok doon. Kasi mahal po ang ating produkto. Napakasimple lang po. Ito nga, yung fruit cocktail. Right now, fruit cocktail. And you know, Cagayan de Oro where Del Monte plant is. General Santos is where Dole, they produce fruit cocktail for our fruit salad. 5% to 29% po ang taxation nito na yun under the ASEAN-Japan Comprehensive Economic Partnership. If we join RCEP, 0% in 16 years. Wala na po tayong babayaran na taripa. Imagine, pwede na tayong maging retire as farmers. I will retire as a farmer. I hope I can plant this papaya and make fruit cocktails and send it to Japan one day. Even our beverage companies can now export alcoholic beverages, beer, Gin, kami ni Senator Cayetano, we were Tanduay drinkers in uh, Los Baños when he was there for one sem. Kasama ko to inuman sa Tanduay. Beer, gin, rum to South Korea at the preferential arrangement. That is from 15% sa uh, existing uh, ASEAN-Korean free trade agreement, it's 15% tax to 0% in 15 years under RCEP. Can you imagine? 0%. So lahat po, pati yung Don Papa, lahat, pwede nang ipasok dun. 0%. These are just examples of Philippine key products of interest that were able to gain improved markets in the RCEP. And will likely be disadvantaged if the Philippines stays out of RCEP. Claro po, pinapakita ko lang ang mga concrete examples para po ma-digest natin lahat. On trade rules, RCEP also provided simplified and convenient rules of conducting trade in the region. From flexible certification procedures, advanced rulings for tarification, 
valuation and rules of origin and time-bound consultations and resolution of issues relating to trade measures, among others. Ibig po sabihin, simple na po. Kasi kung hindi po tayo sasali dyan at doon lang tayo sa existing free trade agreements natin, iba-iba po ang free trade agreements sa Japan. Iba po ang sa China, ASEAN China. Iba po ang sa Korea. Eh, kung sa ease of doing business pa, malilito po kayo. Kung magdadala po kayo sa iba't ibang bansa, litong-lito na po kayo sa iba't ibang uh, rules of conducting trade. Kaya simplified na po ito. In the process, businesses will be able to take advantage of the enhanced preferential access to RCEP parties and strengthen their capacity to participate in global value chains. This will be beneficial to MSMEs because this agreement provides a platform called the RCEP SME chapter and institutionalizes support and cooperation for them to be integrated in the regional global product chain in a bigger market. I'd like to put this on record, my dear friends. RCEP is the only free first agreement of ASEAN with a dedicated chapter on SMEs. First and only, yung mga ibang charters natin in ASEAN, wala po tayong dedicated to small and medium enterprises. This is it. Give you an example. Yung sinabi ko kanina, nag-usap kami, potato corner now. We'll have an easier chance to go all over ASEAN. Maybe even China, because of these simplified rules. Sabi ko nga sa amin sa Kamigin, because I love the island province of Kamigin. I don't know kung nakabisita po kayo jan sa Kagendioro. They have these pastels, yung parang pandesal na may caramel sa loob na napakasarap na pastel. They produce that in Kamigin. Now with these simplified rules, ease of doing business, magabenta na sila sa Indonesia. They can sell in Malaysia without having any difficulty with these simplified cross-border rules. RCEP will also push for a legal framework that is favorable for e-commerce, especially during a time when cross-border activities increasingly shifted online. Positive, what are the positive results as a consequence of RCEP, my dear friends? As economic activity increases, consequence po ito, ah, hindi po ito para sa exporters, hindi po ito para sa importers. Ano pa mga negosyo na makikinabang sa RCEP, mga kababayan? Because of these consequences, more factories will be put up. Goods and services will be transacted, have to be mobilized. Kaya, lalakas po ang complementary sectors such as transportation, tracking, di ba po, ng mga gamit, logistics, warehousing, cold storage, pati energy production, even infrastructure will flourish, not to mention attract more investments. Kaya nandito po si Secretary Laguesma of the Dole because he knows dadami po ang trabaho natin pag tayo sumama dito. Jobs, 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 ika na. Sa paglago ng ating kalakalan sa RCEP region, asahan natin ang ripple effect sa iba't ibang sektor. Halimbawa, sa pagpasok ng foreign investments, hihilay nito patas ang ating construction industry. Sa paglakas naman ng ating exports, kasama nitong Palalakasin ang transport sector na kakailanganin natin sa paghatid ng ating mga produkto. At syempre, sa paglagonit ng iba't ibang manufacturing industries, katulad ng garments, tech parts, canned goods, tataas rin ang demand on related industries, katulad ng packaging. Iyan naman ang pangako ng RCEP. Mas maunlad na kalakalan, mas maraming trabaho, at mas murang bilihin. Let us now focus on the problems of agriculture. Kasi ito po, dito po tayo nakabinbin at lahat ng sektor ay syempre concerned, particularly on agri. Of course, with all these benefits, we understand the issues and concerns of some groups of farmers who are opposed to the ratification of the RCEP agreement. Ako po, alam naman po ninyo, tumayo na ako dito ilang beses dinedepensahan ko po ang ating mga magsasaka. I stood up many times against importations. I stood up many times against smuggling. I stood up many times for different industries, particularly the sugar sector. Bilang isang agriculturista, by education and by profession, naiintindihan ko po ang mga pangamba ng ating mga magsasaka. Alam niyo naman po kung paano ko paglaban ang ating mga magsasaka dito sa loob ng Senado. Kaya gusto ko pong tiyakin sa sektor 
na hindi tatapakan ng arsep ang ating mga magsasaka at hindi nito papatayin ang ating agrikultura. Hindi ko rin naman po ito isusulong kung hindi benepisyo ang nakikita ko at dala natin dito. At ako ang unang haharang nito kung makakasama ito para sa atin. In the public hearings, and this is very important, my dear colleagues, it was confirmed that highly sensitive agriculture products such as rice, swine meat, poultry meat, potatoes, onions, garlic, cabbage, sugar, carrots are exempted, excluded. Hindi po sila kasama dito. Itong mga produkto pinapakita ko sa inyo na araw-araw sinisigawan ng ating mga kritiko, hindi po ito kasale sa RCEP, mga kababayan na nakikinig po sa atin on live Facebook. In fact, for the record, our, in RCEP, the Philippines merely gave additional preferential agreements to 33 agricultural tariff lines, specifically for Australia, New Zealand, China, Korea, compared to the existing ASEAN plus one FTAs. This is only equivalent to 1.9% of the total agricultural tariff lines. Ito, napakaganda po nito. Iba yung tariff lines sa produkto, mga kapatid. 33 agricultural tariff lines, 17 tariff lines are for raw materials, 18 ta 8 tariff lines are for inputs, and only 8 tariff lines are for final goods. Itong 33 tariff lines, pakita natin sa screen, is only equivalent to 15 agricultural products. Mga kapatid, it's only 15 agricultural products, many of which we don't even produce. Babasahin ko. Fish fillet, frozen mackerel, celery, sausages, olives. Wala po tayong olives kasi Mediterranean country lang yan. Ayaw ng ulan. Pag umulan, patay ang olive tree. Spinach. Maliit lang ang spinach. Konti lang ang spinach natin sa bansa. Olive oil. Wala po tayong olive oil. Si Papay lang kumakain ako sa ni Senator Tolentino. Black pepper. We have a thriving black pepper industry. But if you can see, it's right now to only for, it only affects Republic of Korea, 5%. And in year 15, 0%. So napaka-gradual ng bagsak. 15, 15 years pa bago mag-0%. Itong live chicken at live swine, sasabihin ng mga pilosopo. Ay, merong live chicken, may live swine. Alam mo mga kababayan, magpadala ka ng live swine dito, galing China, isang linggo, sampung araw ang biyay sa barko, eh patay na yun. At least may tao na papakain dun sa barko. ba? Masado naman mahal kung ila ililipad mo sila. Live chicken, ganun din. Lalo na yun. Sigurado, pag dinala mo yan sa ibang bansa dito sa barko, halos kalahati na, mortality niyan. Patay na yan. It doesn't make any sense. They lose half their weight. Right? So, it's obvious you are our, our chicken and poult our poultry producers and our swine producers are protected. If you ask me, itong live swine and live chicken was for our ASEAN neighbors that are contiguous to one another. Wala, hindi po sila archipelago. Ano po yan? Uh, Cambodia with Myanmar, China with all these Indochina countries like Vietnam. Kaya siguro linagay nila yun. Preserved onions. Mga babae, nandiyan, preserved onions. Cornstarch, eh yung cornstarch nga, 1% lang lang bagsak. In year 20 pa, 1% lang. Ito ay nakakatawa. Wala naman pong feeds kasi may lumapit sa akin. Yung feeds, mura sa ibang bansa, papasok dito, paano naman kami? It is feeds for primates, hindi po feeds for livestock. Pagkain ng ungguy. It is for feeds for primates, ha? Pagkain ng ungguy yan. Yan lang ang natanggalan ng tariff rate. Okay. So moving on. <laughs> Am I clear? Yes. Huh? Clear as day? Am I clear as day, my dear colleagues, okay? Napaka-insignificant po ng trade natin sa mga produktong ito. Kaya, ikumpara mo sa benepisyo na makukuha natin sa RCEP, walang duda na mas lamang po ang arrangement na nakuha natin. With respect to the availability of W Trade Remedies, WTO, World Trade Organization Remedies, as raised by the group of farmers, Article 7.9 of the RCEP agreement is clear on the matter. To quote, Nothing in this agreement shall affect the rights and obligations of the parties under Article 19 of the General Agreement on Tariff and Trade. 
1994. And the safeguard agreement, sa madaling salita, andyan pa rin po ang WTO safeguards. Hindi mawawala yung w safeguards, WTO safeguards. The transitional RCEP safeguard measure under Article 7.2 referred by the oppositors is just an additional trade remedy available to RCEP parties. What is only prohibited is the imposition of both transitional RCEP safeguard measures and WTO safeguard measures on same goods at the same time. Equally important po ito, mga kababayan. Adequate flexibilities or safe nets are provided in the agreement to cover unwarranted or exceptional circumstances that may occur in the future, including measures related to security, health, and emergency situation. Ano po ito? Tinanong ko po ang ating uh, trade negotiator. Pwede pa rin pala po tayo pumasa ng legislation. We can pass legislation, including rules and regulations of the departments that can restrict imports on the premise of public safety, public health, and emergency situations. So our hands are not tied. If we feel nalulugi isang sektor, we can pass legislation or pass regulation. It will not be violative of the, the, the agreement. To further allay the fears of the agriculture sector, we also come up with a set of guidelines. Ito, maganda po ito. Ito pong recommendation ng aking kapatid, ate, Tita Ganda, Lauren Legarda, our Senate President pro tempore during the hearing of the RCEP, that we will add further protective measures and capacity building programs for the sector thereby ensuring that they can take full advantage and opportunities afforded to us by the agreement. And I thank Senator Lauren Legarda for not sleeping last night to make sure that these guidelines and uh, instructions are in place. Under these guidelines, two-prong po ang atake natin para gawing competitive ang agri-sector against importation. Patitibayin natin ang border and quarantine controls. Yan ang utos natin dito sa ating guidelines. Contra smuggling. And I just like to put on record, the president just appointed a new uh, uh, Bureau of, of Customs Chief because he was re he really is hell-bent in catching smuggling in this agricultural smuggling. We will also modernize and empower our own sector. To the second point, we will strengthen various developmental programs of the Department of Agriculture such as the National Rice Program, National Corn Program, National High Value Crops Development Program, National Livestock Program, National Organic Agriculture Program, National Fisheries Program, Agricultural Machinery and Equipment Facilities Infrastructure Program under the Agriculture Modernization Plan. Kasama rin sa guidelines, ang access ng ating mga magsasaka, nararapat na credit, insurance, loans, and grants. We also have trade promotions, productivity, and profitability competitive bro competitiveness programs such as the science and technology innovation-driven industrialization strategy, the shared service facilities, the Philippine Export Competitiveness Program, the Consultancy for Agriculture Productivity Enhancement Program, among others. These are from my favorite agency, the Department of Trade and Industry. We also have made space for good governance measures to foster trust, transparency, and accountability. Dito, palalakasin natin ang feedback mechanism at sisiguruin namin na may genuine representation and participation ng lahat ng ating mga stakeholders, including Afghan reform beneficiaries, indigenous communities, at sa ating mga boards, councils, at committees. Kasama natin ang sektor sa policy and program development, including budget preparation, and allocation. Under the guidelines that we prepared, we are also pushing for job generation, human capital development programs to ensure competitiveness of the Filipino workforce. Ayan ang dyan magaling si Majority Leader, uh, Tess Daman, uh, Joel Villanueva, including continuous capacity building, reskilling, upskilling, cross-skilling of workers to adapt to technological development and evolving business models and industries. And I thank Sec Laguesma for being here and uh, supporting this. Towards environmental protection, which is the love of my dear colleague, Senator Lauren Legarda, we will ensure the effective enforcement of environmental laws, rules and regulations, 
and the adherence to multilateral environmental agreements in the conduct of trade against investment and the implementation of stringent measures against industrial waste, hazards, and illicit activities. We will also push for the effective use of trade remedies to address unfair trade practices or sudden surge of imports that threaten to adversely affect our concerned local industries. For this purpose, my dear colleagues, I seek your permission, I seek your support, that we create a Senate Special Oversight Committee on the RCEP Agreement to monitor the policy and programs of concerned agencies and departments, and if necessary, come up with legislative proposals to pursue structural reforms and address implementation gaps. We will also have an advisory group of stakeholders to guide the committee on its functions, particularly our agri stakeholders. Kasama po sila as our consultative body. My dear colleagues, okay, magalala, patapos na po ito. My dear honorable colleagues, we've already spent enough time debating and evaluating the pros and cons of the RCEP agreement. What is clear that the RCEP agreement is just a policy tool we have to use. The most important question to us really is how, my dear colleagues, how do we utilize this agreement and seize the opportunity that it offers? Ito na po ang trabaho natin sa gobyerno. Our task is to ensure that our stakeholders make us use, make use rather of this potent agreement and that necessary interventions can be done to capacitate and empower our stakeholders, particularly our MSMEs, farmers, fisher folk, professionals, and workers, for them to be competitive in the global industry. The fruits of RCEP will yield is not proverbial guava that will fall into our open mouths. It will have, we will have to work for it, my dear friends, and we will have to sweat for it. I'm making it clear because RCEP should not be oversold to our people as a magic cure and overpromised as our economic salvation. What it is, my dear colleagues, is an opportunity and a bridge towards better connected economic region where the Philippines can establish itself as a major economic force. We have the resources to do so, and most especially hard work and innovation of our people, and I truly believe in our people to lead the way. With RCEP, we may finally have a tool to push us to the very top. Not joining the biggest free trail deal in the world will make us the biggest losers. To be left out of RCEP is to be left behind in a region where economies use free and fair trade to propel their growth. But let us not ratify this pact out of fear, but out of the goodness it could bring. These provisions in this agreement are not barriers to our development, but a bridge to progress. Not walls that will block our growth, but a ladder to climb out of the economic situation the pandemic has created. As of today, we are the odd man out of RCEP, the last man standing out in the cold, not because we are not invited, but because of our inaction. Kaya, mga kapatid kong senador, umaksyon na po tayo. Huwag na tayong matakot sa RCEP. Let us accept RCEP. Mabuhay po tayong lahat. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you, our Senate President. Mr. President. Sir President. Senator Alan Caetano. Just a quick observation Sir. lang. No? Number one, may we all congratulate the Senate President in a very comprehensive and articulate presentation. But basically, simple lang sinasabi niya, ang RCEP ay subiri good. Okay? Yun lang ang sinasabi niya, subiri good ang RCEP. And to bolster this, and we'd like to welcome, the whole executive department is here to show us that it is not only very good, but very important. So just one observation. Every time there's something like this, definitely may benefit. Pero definitely may naiiwan. At usually yung nag-iwan, nagahabol later on. So let us take advantage that the Senate President and the Senate President Pro Temp mismo ang nagpupush nito. Nandito yung buong executive department. Yung sinasabi natin safety net, yung sinasabi natin capability building, isabay na rin natin ponduhan at ipasa. So again, uh, congratulations Mr. Senate President and in advance to our Senate uh, President Pro Tem for all the preparations and to the executive department.
we like it when you are in full force here. So you're very much welcome. Mabuhay po kayo. Thank you, Senator Caetano, Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Indeed, uh, that was a uh, fantastic uh, sponsorship speech, Mr. President. It's crystal clear. And let me also put on record that uh, the uh, ex officio members signed the uh, committee report, including this representation. Uh, and our minority leader, as mentioned a while ago by uh, our Senate President. And uh, to give her co-sponsorship speech, uh, Mr. President, I move that we recognize our Senate President pro tempore, Senator Loren Legarda. Our Senate President pro tempore, Senator Loren Legarda, will now give her sponsorship speech. Thank you, Mr. President. Nobyembre, taon dalawang libo at labing isa, nang ipinagtibay ng ASEAN leaders ang ASEAN Framework for Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership sa 19th ASEAN Summit sa Bali, Indonesia. Nang sumunod na taon, ang mga pinuno ng sampung ASEAN member states at ng anim niyang ASEAN Free Trade Agreement Partners na kinabibilangan ng Japan, China, Australia, New Zealand, South Korea at India ay opisyal na nilunsad ang RCEP negotiations. Ito'y naganap noong November 2012 nang sinagawa ang 21st ASEAN Summit and Related Summit sa Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Sa taloob ng walong taon, ginanap ang masusing negosyasyon sa RCEP na pinamumunuan ng Department of Trade and Industry daladala ang mga patnubay mula sa mga sektor na kinonsulta. There was a total of 28 full rounds of RCEP negotiations, eight regular and 10 intersessional ministerial meetings that were convened over a period of eight years. On top of these, there were four RCEP leaders' summits held. Within at the fourth RCEP summit on November 15, 2020, the RCEP agreement was signed. Ngayon, labing dalawang taon matapos nilunsad ang RCEP, Tinatanong pa din natin ang ating sarili, kailangan ba natin ito? RCEP's rich historical antecedents and claims on its benefits, on the other hand, begs the question, why not? I will be the first to agree or to argue, however, that a number of years spent in one study or the negotiations of international instruments such as the RCEP does not define the quality of a treaty. What defines a good treaty for each participating country are its principles, the goals that are given life through informed and carefully weighed commitments and vigorous capacity building measures and safeguards to address the peculiar circumstances of each participating member economy including the respective economic sectors that are struggling to deal with various forms of barriers that inhibit growth, barriers that hinder their participation in cross-border trade and global value chains. I have carefully weighed the risks of RCEP vis-a-vis the benefits that it will bring to our people. Let me underscore the following. Based on 2020 data, the RCEP free trade area accounts for 29% of the world's trade, 29% of the world's GDP, 33% of global inward foreign direct investment FDI, 47% of global outward FDI, and 2.3 billion population or 29% of the world's population. We ask ourselves, can we actually afford to dismiss the opportunities offered by this regional market? The very sensitive agricultural products are excluded from our tariff commitments in RCEP. In fact, under RCEP, more agricultural tariff lines were excluded from tariff commitments compared to our commitments under the ASEAN trade in goods agreement or ATIGA and the ASEAN plus one FTAs. Under RCEP, the Philippines only offered, as the Senate President so ably mentioned, 33 agricultural tariff lines, covering only 15 products for further liberalization, specifically for Australia, New Zealand, 
China and South Korea compared to the existing ASEAN plus one free trade agreements. This is only equivalent to 1.9% of the total agricultural tariff lines. Second, the global and regional markets are already open. Trade has been liberalized. We already have bilateral trade agreements and the ASEAN free trade agreements. Whether we concur with the ratification of RCEP or not, the world has already evolved into a global marketplace with pockets of regional markets. RCEP is essentially a step towards ensuring that a rules-based, transparent, and conducive business environment is promoted to ensure sustainable and inclusive economic growth. Now, why would we not want to be a part of this? Third, RCEP offers better market access for key Philippine products such as preserved pineapples, coconut juice, papaya, durian, for markets like China, Korea, and Japan. It offers additional guaranteed market access for services in Australia, China, Japan, Korea, and New Zealand. Many of our production sectors need more markets, and they are clamoring for it. RCEP offers enhanced and stable rules to encourage investments and presents opportunities for our professionals and service providers in the RCEP region. RCEP offers opportunities for economic and technical cooperation in order to boost our competitiveness and build our comparative advantage in sectors with the greatest strength. Hindi po bulag ang Senado sa mga hinaing ng hanay ng ating mga magsasaka. Ako po ay nakikiisa po sa inyong mga hinaing kung kaya't sa aking pag-sponsor po ng RCEP ay naghahain din po ako ng malakas na panawagan para maipatupad ang mga sumusunod na alituntunin sa pagpaganap ng RCEP. Una, sa ating mga namamahala sa Department of Trade, Department of Agriculture, Department of Science and Technology, Department of Budget and Management, Department of Agrarian Reform, Tariff Commission, Intellectual Property Office, National Economic Development Authority, other agencies, iba pang mga ahensya ng gobyerno, matutong makinig sa mga magsasaka at iba pang sektor ng ating ekonomiya. Promote inclusiveness, not just as an end goal, but also by the way we will achieve our goals. Matuto po tayong makipag-usap sa ating pinagsisilbihan. Buhayin po sana natin ang Anti-Smuggling Committee, ang Public-Private Agriculture Budget Monitoring Committee, at iba pang mga komite na magbibigay daan sa isang tunay at patuloy na dialogo at makikipagtulungan sa hanay ng gobyerno at mga sektor ng produksyon. We need to strengthen public-private cooperation through joint consultative and monitoring mechanisms. This will enhance accountability, promote mutual learning, encourage best practices and harness trust. Ikalawa, itaguyod ang transparency sa lahat ng kalakaran. If you want to optimize the benefits of global and regional trading systems offered not just by RCEP, but by other multilateral and bilateral trading systems, we need to make transparency among the cornerstones of transactions in government and with our trading partners. Share information that will allow our sectors to grow and be informed of the vast opportunities in the domestic, regional, and global marketplace. Gamitin ang datos para mapalaganap ang kahusayan sa ating produksyon. Ikatlo. Reform and improve our programs. Makipagsangguni sa mga sektor na layunin nating matulungan. Sino ba ang mas nakakaalam kung anong programa ang nararapat kundi ang mga sektor na nais nating tulungan. Set targets and timeframes for our programs that are responsive to the needs of our farmers, our micro-enterprises, and other production sectors. Dapat lamang po may timeframe at due date at lahat ng pinapangako nating programa. Wala pong forever at bawal ang walang katapusang paghihintay sa mga pinapangakong tulong sa ating mga farmers at mga sektor na nangangailangan ng tulong. 
better MSME and agriculture sector access to finance, technical and infrastructure support, creating competitiveness in our sectors, harnessing the power of digital infrastructure and technologies, strengthening the supply chain connectivity, promoting a productive and efficient workforce, accelerating green growth, building resilient businesses, just to name a few, should be addressed by our programs. We cannot be competitive based on promised assistance to our ailing sectors. We need concrete action to be delivered fast. Remember, Philippine Congress appropriates resources to serve specific purposes. We must make sure these are well spent within the time frame that we committed to deliver them. Our state of competitiveness will define how much more opportunities we can turn into success stories in our set. The services sector is an example of such a success story. The Philippines is a net service exporter with consistent trade surpluses from 2012 to 2020, with an all-time high of 13.08 billion US dollars in year 2020. We need to create comparative advantages to our economic sectors. It all boils down to finding our niche and seizing opportunities and defining a role in the regional and global marketplace. Dapat po natin linangin ang oportunidad na naghihintay sa larangan ng trade-in services para sa ating mga manggagawa at mga negosyante. Trade-in services is a growing key interest in the Philippines, evident in its fast-paced growth recorded from 2012 to 2020. With a compounded annual growth rate of 5.5%, the country's services exports have brought in an average of 30.6 billion US dollars every year. Ikalima, at pinakaimportante sa lahat, patatagin at pag-ibayuhin ang governance. Dahil dito ay kalakip ng resolusyon na ami pong sinusulong ang pagtatayo ng Oversight Committee ng RCEP Implementation para masubaybayan at siguraduhin na ang mga pinangakong tulong para sa mga sektor ng agrikultura kasama na ang paglalaan ng budget at tulong pinansal at teknikal sa ating mga magsasakat mangingisda at MSME ay matutupad. In this light, we will provide funding but also demand deliverables, exact accountabilities but be fair, pursue structural reforms as necessary, ensure that our MSMEs are supported so they can take advantage of the opportunities of RCEP and require stronger public-private cooperation and partnership. We will support initiatives to strengthen country representation in the global and regional stage to achieve the greatest outcomes for our people in various global and regional trade arrangements. RCEP has given all of us an opportunity to underscore the value of public-private academic dialogue. It raised an opportunity for us to remind our executive department to heed the call of innovation so we are not left behind. Republic Act 11293, otherwise known as the Philippine Innovation Act, was signed into law April 17, 2019. Nearly four years since, we have yet to realize a whole of government collaboration that removes fragmentation in the country's innovation governance. I therefore call on NEDA, DTI, DA, and the IPO, the private sector, to take advantage of the policy mechanisms under the Philippine Innovation Act. Hindi lang po pamahalaan ang inaasahan nating kumilos upang ang sektor na magsasakat mangingisda ay ating matulungan. May mga sektor na tiyak nating makikinabang kung kaya hindi lamang isang beses kundi tatlo sa nakaraang taon hinihikayat tayo ng industriya at mga profesional na ratipikahan na ito. Kaya po nananagawan, nananawagan po ako sa kanila. Sabay-sabay nating iangat ang sektor na nagpapakain sa atin. Isama ko sila sa pagbuo ng mekanismo para matiyak ang mga hakbang na kailangan para hindi na ulit maramdaman ng magsasaka na naisahan na naman sila. One example is a legal fund or a commitment to legal representation for when the commitments are not met or for when provisions of law are not complied with or mandates are not fulfilled. Another is to help them bridge capacity innovate to produce the raw materials you need, assist with financial management. There are many ways to make sure 
that what we know to be imperative for the success of this venture will actually happen. To my esteemed colleagues, fellow workers in government, and to the public we serve, my decision to lend support to the ratification of RCEP is premised on my conviction that an open, transparent, and predictable trade and investment environment generates new opportunities for everyone. The RCEP agreement, the instrument that binds us with the other participating countries, will help us achieve the right conditions to expand our markets for goods and services, create more jobs, build opportunities to strengthen the various economic sectors in ways that will make them more competitive and, more importantly, assist our MSMEs, having been the principal author in my second term, in participating in cross-border trade as well as in regional value chains. RCEP will help us deepen engagement, not just with other participating countries, but more so among various economic sectors in our society and with government. We cannot stand in isolation as we face this huge wave of global and regional economic integration. We need to build capacities and efficiencies to achieve competitiveness. Our benchmark for efficiencies and productivity should be leveled against the best in the world and in the region. We should not see RCEP as a mere agreement for setting rules for regulating trade and trade-related activities. RCEP, as in other global and regional trading agreements, will help our economic sectors push their performance. This will hopefully benefit our consumers. The end goal, however, is for the various areas of production to find a niche that will allow them to be a part of the global and regional value chain. Aking hiling ng mga alituntunin na ating pong binanggit kanina ay tanggapin bilang parte ng ating hinahaing resolusyon na ating ipapasa. Ang mga ito po ay binuupo natin matapos ang masusing konsultasyon sa mga iba't ibang sektor. My colleagues, I invite all of you to join me in supporting and concurring in the ratification of the RCEP agreement. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Senator Lauren Legarda, Majority Leader. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. We uh, congratulate also our Senate President Pro Tem for her um, sponsorship speech. Mr. President, uh, before we uh, suspend consideration of this uh, particular measure, may I move that the uh, that uh, Senator Francis Tolentino be recognized for his uh, short manifestation. There's no objection. Senator Francis Tolentino is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I associate myself with the statements made by our Senate leadership, supportive of RCEP, considering that, considering that our Accession to RCEP would mean we will be part of the group responsible for more than $25.8 trillion of economic output, 29% of the global domestic product, which is $12.7 trillion of global trade, and as a market of 2.3 billion people or 30% of the world's population, Mr. President. But, Mr. President, I was informed of the presence of almost the entire membership of the executive department here. And I'd like to take this opportunity to call the attention of the Department of Foreign Affairs. We will, we will definitely be approving RCEP. But the precept of this representation, Mr. President, is that we have likewise a job to strengthen RCEP during its infancy stage. Ang nagkukulang po dito, Mr. President, siguro yung tulong ng Department of Foreign Affairs, kung nakikinig po sila. Mr. President, during the last Congress, January 25, 2022, to be exact, I called the attention of this chamber, that there are certain, for me then, certain foundational international agreements that could 
strengthen ourselves, especially during its toddler stage in the Philippines. Ano-ano po ito? Sana po mapakinggan ako ng Department of Foreign Affairs, mapadala po ito sa Senado, at nasa ganun po, pag ito po ay naratify ng Senado, lalong lalakas po, Mr. President, yung RCEP. For the record, Mr. President, I have here a list of five key treatises, treaties related to RCEP, which we should likewise ratify. Number one, the Hague Choice of Court Convention, Mr. President. Number two, the United Nations Convention on Contracts for the International Sale of Goods, signed last June 30, 2025. Number three, the United Nations Convention on the Use of Electronic Communications in International Contracts, signed November 2025. The Convention on the Recognition of Enforcement of Foreign Judgments in Civil and Commercial Matters, Mr. President. And finally, the Hague Evidence Convention. Nagtataka lang po ako, Mr. President, bakit ang tatagal na po nitong mga tratadong ito ay hindi pa nakakarating sa kaalaman ng Senado. Kung atin pong ulitin ko po yung sinabi ko, Kagaya po ng nilalaman ng Article 12.10 of the RCEP itself. Nakalagay po doon, Each party shall adopt or maintain a legal framework governing electronic transactions, taking into account the UNCITRAL Model Law on Electronic Commerce, 1996, the United Nations Convention on the Use of Electronic Communications in International Contracts, dated 23 November 2025. Mr. President, kung ito po ay na-ratipika na, na natin, mas lalakas po ang RCEP. So, Mr. President, I, I concur with the thesis of one of my favorite law professors that RCEP can be a, a treaty that can stand alone, Mr. President. But nevertheless, we have other treaties pending that needs ratification. Again, Mr. President, I call upon the Department of Foreign Affairs submit the five treaties I mentioned, this representation just mentioned, because this would further strengthen our set. Having said that, Mr. President, I reiterate for the record my support of RCEP. I have signed the committee report, but the five treaties should likewise be submitted to this chamber. Maraming salamat po, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Francis Tolentino, Majority Leader. Mr. President, Senator Robin Hood Padilla is seeking the floor. I move that he be recognized, Mr. President. Senator Robin Hood Padilla is recognized. Uh, maraming salamat po, ginoong uh, Pangulo at sa ating uh, pinunong mayorya. A'udhu billahi minas shaitan rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Uh, mahal na ginoong Pangulo, ako po ay labis na naliligayahan katulad po ng naramdaman ni Senator Alan Peter Caetano sapagkat nandito po sa ating uh, bulwagan ang kabuuan ng uh, executive uh, branch of government. Isa po itong napakagandang sinyales sapagkat uh, alam niyo po, ginoong uh, Pangulo, tayo po'y naniniwala sa parliamentary form of government. At dito po natin nakikita, nakikita sa pangyayaring ito na ang executive ay parte, ay nagiging parte ng legislative. Pagamat sa ating form of government, sa ngayon magkahiwalay yan, pero sa ganap na ito, kitang-kita po natin na ang executive ay nakikiisa sa legislative. Napakaganda po nitong sinyalis para sa inyong lingkod na namumuno ng komite ng revisyon ng saligang batas. At pangalawa, sa atin pong uh, napakinggan na talumpati ng ating pinakamamahal na Senate President, ang atin pong uh, 
tinatawag na ama ng Bangsamoro, uh, uh, Senator Mig Sumiri. Napakaganda po ng uh, talumpati ni Senator Mig Sumiri sapagkat naging maliwanag po doon sa kanyang talumpati na napakahalaga ng investment. Foreign investment. At sa kanya pong slide na ipakita doon ang growth ng Vietnam at ng ibang mga bansa na nakapaligid sa atin na bukas ang FDI. Ang akin pong pinupuntahan, mga mahal kong kababayan, na kung gusto po natin magtagumpay ang RCEP, ito po ang tamang panahon dahil alam naman po ng mga ekonomista na ang trade at investment ay magkapatid. Hindi po yan pwedeng paghiwalayin. Kaya po sana, sana, maintindihan po ng ating bulwagan, ng ating mga kasama, sa kasulukuyan, sa ekonomiya po ng mundo, ang Pilipinas po ay pangatlo, pangatlo sa merong pinakamahigpit na regulasyon pagdating po sa foreign investment. At pagdating po sa tinatawag nila sa Asia-Pacific economy, tayo po ay labing tatlo sa, sa labing apat. Tayo po, nakakatawa mga kapatid. Kaya po sana, ito pong pagkakataon na ito na tayo po ay nagsasama dito ang legislative at ang executive. Sana po, sana po ang aking pakiusap pag dumating po ang punto na pag-usapan natin ng foreign direct investment ay ganuti din po ang mangyaring suporta. Maraming maraming salamat po. Mabuhay po kayo. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat, Senator Robin Padilla. Tama po na napaka-importante nito dahil ang mismong ating Senate President at Senate President pro tempore ang nanguna kasama po ang Executive Department na nandito ngayong hapon. Majority Leader. Yes, Mr. President, the uh, distinguished lady from uh, Pangasinan, Iloilo, in the Republic of the Philippines seeking the floor, I move that Senator Grace Poe be recognized. Uh, Senator Grace Poe is recognized. Mr. President, I'd like to uh, thank Senator Padilla for his manifestation today. And I would also like to welcome, warmly welcome the members of the executive. I would just like to point out that during the last Congress, we passed many... Uh, legacy bills, particularly the Public Service Act, the Trade Liberalization Act, and the Foreign Investments Act, all of which were priority measures of the last administration, um, precisely to open up our economy. Uh, maybe I would like to appeal also that the executive, particularly the National Economic Development Authority, speed up the passage of or, or are composing the implementing rules and regulations so that the Public Service Act will finally be enacted. It is in the law that within six months of approval of the bill, the IRR shall be composed, meaning by April that should be ready. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Grace Paul, Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President, and I join our distinguished colleagues for uh, calling the attention of our uh, counterparts in the executive to uh, fast track the uh, implementing rules and regulations of the said uh, measures. Mr. President, uh, to allow our colleagues to uh, uh, further study this uh, particular measure and uh, with the permission of the body, I move that we suspend consideration of proposed Senate Resolution number 485 under Committee Report number 29. So move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? There being none. Consideration of proposed Senate Resolution Number 485 under Committee Report Number 29. 29 is hereby suspended. Mr. President, I move for a minute suspension. Session suspended.
the body, I move that we proceed with a privileged speech and uh, recognize our distinguished colleague, the uh, chairperson of the Committee on Public Service, Senator Grace Poe, to deliver her speech. So move, Mr. President. Thank you. Before I recognize Senator Grace Poe, I uh, truly want to thank the members of the cabinet that are here today who heard this uh, uh, very momentous and uh, I'd say historic uh, uh, ratification, hopefully the next week, no, of RCEP and discussions of RCEP. We thank you uh, all, to the cabinet secretaries and undersecretaries. But we also like to thank you for staying a little bit longer because I believe that the topic that will be taken up by our dear colleague, Senator Grace Poe, is also of utmost importance on public safety and security. So we now recognize your distinguished colleague, Senator Grace Poe, for her uh, privilege motion. Thank you, Mr. President, for accommodating. And I would also like to thank our esteemed uh, executive secretary, as well as the, our special assistant to the president, for giving us time today to hear this, I feel, very important um, very important report which can touch on national security and expose corruption. Mr. President, I think 2023 is Naia's year. Unfortunately, not for any good reason. More than a month after the infamous New Year's Day air traffic system glitch, and dito na naman po tayo dahil sa isa na namang aberya sa airport. Dito lamang lunes, just two days ago, February 13, 3.09 p.m., ay nakatanggap ng anonymous tip ang PNP Aviation Security Group tungkol sa isang human trafficking activity involving an aircraft with tail number N9527E that is set to depart at about 10 p.m. on the same day at Naia going to Dubai. Matapos ba Verifikahin na kumpirma na may nakaschedule nga na flight ang nasabing eroplano sa araw sa araw at oras na yon. The anonymous information also noted that only six passengers have been declared, but a total of 14 passengers will actually board the aircraft. Mr. President. Ang nasabing eroplano ay operated ng Cloud9 Number no. 1 Leasing Company Limited, isang Hong Kong registered leasing company, at ang kanilang assigned aircraft ground handler ay isang local company, ang Globan Aviation Service Corporation or Globan. Bandang alas 5 ng araw ding yon, the PNP Aviation Security Group, NCR, briefed the aircraft inspectors about a possible interdiction operation at mahigit silang pinilinan na wag pirmahan ang anumang dokumento hanggat hindi na i-inspect ang nasabing eroplano at ang mga sakay nito. At 7.45 p.m., the aircraft inspectors, together with four General Aviation Police Station personnel, proceeded to the Balagbag ramp where the subject aircraft is stationed for departure. Pagdating nila, agad nilang ipinaalam sa global representative na i-inspectionin muna ang eroplano at mga pasahero nito bago pirmahan ang safety and security flight coordination sheet na kailangan para makalipad ito. Mga 9.15 p.m., tatlong foreign national crew na sakay ng dalawang global vans ang dumating. Sumunod dito, mga 10.11 p.m., isang global van sa kayang tatlong immigration officers at tatlong iba pang sasakyan sa kayang ang anim na foreign nationals ang dumating na rin. They were escorted by the airport police department patrol vehicle. Matapos ang verification procedure ng mga immigration officers, lumalabas na lahat ng anim na pasaherong dumating ay sila ring nakasaad sa general declaration. Pero katakataka, Mr. President, dahil sabi ng global handler ay may hinihintay pa daw sila isa pang pasahero. Mr. President, we were able to secure a copy of the flight's general declaration at nakasaad dito na tatlong crew at anim na pasahero lang ang dapat nasakay ng eroplano. Ngunit base sa impormasyong nakuha namin mula sa Bureau of Immigration, pito ang pasahero nakasaad sa hawak nilang general declaration, isang Malaysian, 
Korean, Chinese, Vanuatu at tatlong mula sa St. Kitts ang ne and Nevis. Nasabi rin sa atin na ang hawak nilang mga visa ay mix ng tourism, employment at special resident retirees visa. Ngayon, Mr. President, yung mga pangalan na hindi namin ipapakita muna ngayon, uh, mostly mga Chinese na pangalan, pero ang citizenship nila iba-iba. Merong St. Kitts at Nevis na alam naman natin, dun sa mga lugar na yon ay meron silang investors visa program. So kahit na anong nationality mo, basta meron kang investment doon, pwede mong makuha ang kanilang citizenship. Bandang 10.20 p.m., may dumating na dalawang van sa kayang hindi isa pero walong Asian-looking nationals, Mr. President. These individuals were not included in the general declaration but they attempted to board the aircraft. Attempted dahil natigilan sila nang makita ng kumukuha ng video ang isa sa mga aircraft inspectors. However, at around the same time, the inspectors noticed three unauthorized individuals entering the aircraft, followed by the aircraft door closing. So yung anim na na-clear, nakapasok na, meron nag-attempt na walo pang papasok pero napigilan dahil nakita ng may nagbibideo. Pero bago isara ang pinto ng eroplano, may nakalusot na tatlo na wala doon sa manifest. Agad inutusan ng mga aircraft inspectors ang global handler na pigilan ang departure ng eroplano. Matapos nito, agad nagpunta ang head ng PNP Aviation Security Group sa rampa at kuinestyon ng immigration officers. Una, kung bakit aalis ang eroplano nang hindi dumaan sa pre-flight inspection. Number two, bakit may mga karagdagang mga pasahero na wala sa general declaration? Mr. President, ang sagot ng immigration officer ay na proseso na raw nila ang mga karagdagang pasahero at clear to travel. Na ang mga ito kahit wala sa flight manifest, kasalukuyang iniimbestigahan ngayon ng Bureau of Immigration ang insidenting ito. Hinihintay din natin ang kanilang tugon tungkol sa issue. At about 10.40 p.m., despite efforts to coordinate with the global representatives and immigration officers, the aircraft continued to take off. After this, Police Colonel Campo called a certain retired General Robles of Kaap to request the control tower to hold the departure of the aircraft. Ang sabi ni General Robles ay, hindi ito posible dahil naaprubahan na ang flight navigation clearance. Mr. President, apparently, hindi itong unang pagkakataon na nangyayari ito. Noong December 22, may mga Chinese nationals din na sumakay sa isang private aircraft at umalis ang eroplano na walang pre-flight inspection clearance. Talo pa ang mga tao sa gobyerno. Sila hindi na dumada ng regular immigration process. Doon sila mismo binababa sa, sa may runway, doon sa mga base na may escort sila. International flight ito, hindi ito domestic. Nai-report na ito sa MIA, ngunit katakataka, wala namang naging aksyon. At hanggang ngayon, tinatawagan natin yung general manager, mukhang nagmumuni-muni pa sila kung anong dapat isagot dito. Malinaw na may irregularity at paglabag sa existing policies at procedures ng airport agencies tulad ng MIA, Immigration, PNP Aviation at CAAP. Una, walang flight inspection clearance na kailangang bago ang departure ng anumang international flight. Pangalawa, may mga individual na kapasok sa security restricted area nang dumaan sa tamang security screening procedure at documentation. Hindi rin malinaw kung ang mga biyahe, bagahe nila ay dumaan sa nasabing proseso. Anong daladala nila doon? Pag tayo ine-escort, papasok doon sa may tarmac ng airport, um, yan ay usually domestic flight at saka isang katutak na kailangan meron tayong dinadaan ng proseso. Ito, parang kasama pa nila ang immigration sa, sa paghatid sa kanila. Walang, walang nakalista kung anong mga daladala nilang bagahe. Mr. President, Pwede pa lang pumuslit dito kahit sino. Pwedeng ispia, pwedeng nag-human traffic. 
Nakakatakot. Anong mga daladala nila? More than just a protocol glitch, the issue digs deeper as it involves national security and human trafficking. We call on the Bureau of Immigration to explain how individuals were able to fly out of the country with just a whim of uttered clearance from an immigration officer without an amendment of the general declaration based on proper procedures. Bakit sila kailangan itransport palabas ng bansa na walang dokumentasyon? Malinaw na may tinatago ang mga taong nasa likod nito. Is this a case of human trafficking? But we have yet to confirm. Hanggang ngayon, despite our consistent follow-ups, we are still awaiting the report from MIA. Mr. President, I've been recently reporting to the body about human trafficking and abduction incidents involving POGOs. Siguro kailangan rin nating masilip kung may kinalaman ba ang industriya sa insidenting ito. Bagamat iba-iba ang nationality ng mga pasaherong involved, mapapansin na Chinese-sounding names ang lahat ng pasahero maliban sa isang Korean. We call on the proper committees to look into this further so that we can strengthen and reinforce our borders at once. Let us let us now allow private flights. Let us not allow private flights in our airports as a way for human trafficking. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah. Before we recognize other members, I'd just like to put on record my disgust, utter disgust in that incident. Coming now with the President and uh, Sap Anton was with me in this trip together with Senator Ben Jokno, uh, Secretary Ben Jokno. When we go to the with the presidential trip, we have to submit and surrender our passports a day before uh, we surrender it already so that it can be inspected. And all our check-in baggages have to be sent in half a day to be inspected by the immigrations, pati customs, and pati uh, PSG. So kung kami nga sa presidential trip, eh, dadaan ng napaka-sinsina na inspection process. Sino to mga ito? And I totally agree. It's just not, it, not only spies, you can have criminals. They could have a criminal record here and then to avoid uh, arrest, flying out in the middle of the night, in the dead of the night. Uh, I'm glad that the Senate, uh, the Secretary, Secretary Anton is here, who was the ear of the President, together with the uh, ES heads must roll. Po. I mean, it's on TV. I saw it last night. It was, it's actually recorded how they were making patintero with these people. Nakalusot pa yung tatlo. Talagang nakakahiya. Uh, this, you know, we're trying to get a good image, especially the FAA in the United States. If they know they take note of this. We're going to be again in the blacklist of uh, uh, the airlines industry and, of course, uh, uh, human trafficking. Majority Leader? Yes, Mr. President. I joined the uh, distinguished lady from uh, uh, Pangasinan, Iloilo, and the Republic of the Philippines, Senator Grace Po, in uh, condemning this uh, ridiculous uh, incident, Mr. President. I joined uh, our Senate President for uh, uh, in condemning uh, this this uh, um, ridiculous uh, incident, Mr. President, that is not only talking, and, and we're not only talking about uh, national security here or uh, uh, human trafficking, uh, Mr. President, but also accountability, because these are very uh, 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 sensitive uh, matters, Mr. President. Di pa pwede na parang Como may v, 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 VIP, very, 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 very important person na guest itong mga salarin na ito, ay uh, magagawa na nila kung ano yung uh, gusto nilang gawin. This is an issue of accountability, issue also of uh, graft and corruption, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, Senator uh, Bato de la Rosa and Senator uh, Risa Ondeveros would like, and our Senate President Pro Temp would like also to uh, make a uh, manifestation. May I move that... Uh, Senator Bato de la Rosa be recognized. A distinguished gentleman, a former chief of the Philippine National Police, who, by the way, were the ones with eagle eyes who had spotted this uh, infraction taking place. So I congratulate and commend the PNP and the Aviation Unit. We'd like to recognize uh, Senator Bato de la Rosa. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, would the good uh, gentlewoman from Pangasinan yield to... I, are we... Mr. President, uh, with the indulgence of our dear colleague, uh, we, we might just uh, entertain a manifestation, Mr. President, if, we, if it is okay. And then we will continue uh, later on uh, with the indulgence of, uh, of course, of our... And maybe we can, we can already excuse our cabinet members 
Because they have a meeting with because, the president. Because they have a meeting with the president, uh, yes. Mr. Uh, uh, with the Mr. permission president. of our colleagues. With the permission of our colleagues. We, 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 we can entertain manifestations, uh, Mr. President, but uh, perhaps we will continue the interpolations later on, if it's okay with our... Yes, team. Mr. President. Yeah, we can continue the interpolations later on. Yes. It's a very important topic, and I would like to allow Senator De La Rosa time to be able to... Yes. Ask questions on that particular issue. And Senator Risa, Mr. President. And Risa, Senator Risa, and Senator, Senator Lawrence. Yes. Uh, Mr. Just President, a, just a short manifestation, yeah. Mr. President, please. Please go ahead, Paul. Uh, may, may I move that uh, this uh, privileged speech be referred to appropriate committee so that uh, we can start the investigation right away, yes. Mr. President? Because uh, apparently, our, our people, our people on the ground are uh, are doing. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. Well, 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 these people who are identified to be Chinese-sounding names, uh, they, they, their compatriots are blinding our uh, Coast Guard uh, with uh, uh, laser lights. And yet, they to sa ating teritoryo, they're giving the VIP treatment. What a disgusting uh, incident, Mr. President. Ako i, ako i, hindi ako nainis, kundi gusto ko lang sakalin yung mga Mga, mga tao natin na gumagawa ng ganun. You can just imagine. The same people with the Chinese sounding names are blinding our Coast Guard personnel. And fishermen. Listen, and fishermen. And fishermen. Mga mga insta. Nandito sila sa ating, ating teritoryo. Pinibigyan natin ng binabayulit natin lahat ng protocols, binabayulit lahat ng batas, just to give VIP treatment to these people. So what a disgust, what a disgusting uh, incident, Mr. President. So I move, I move that you repair this uh, privileged speech to my committee, Mr. President. So yes, I will. Uh, I see three committees uh, involved here, uh, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Majority Floor Leader, yeah. if I may. Uh, the committee of Senator uh, Bato de la Rosa, which is the public, uh, uh, sorry, uh, public order and security, also public services, and also Blue Ribbon, because there's a corruption issue here. I, I'm sure these people have to be punished. Ito yung mga nakapagpasok ng mga taong ito, treating them like VVIPs. They were flushed with money. Na, nabulag ito ng pera. Kaya ginawa nila ito. I'm sure of it. Nabulaga ng pera. Nasilawan. Nasilawan ng pera yan. Dapat yan, tanggalin. Let's expose them together. Let's the Senate expose them. And I fully support my dear colleague, Senator Bato de la Rosa. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Risa, Mr. President, on the Veros, seeking the floor. I move that she be recognized. Yes, our distinguished Deputy Minority Floor Leader, Senator Risa on the Veros, who is also a champion against anti-human uh, trafficking, is recognized. Again, salamat, Mr. President. Just a brief manifestation ng uh, pagsuporta at pagpugay sa pag-expose nitong uh, human trafficking attempt. Hindi natin alam kung una pa lang or na may na mga nauna na at the, uh, as perpetrated by the same parties sa naginawa uh, ngayong araw ng uh, gentlewoman from Pangasinan at Iloilo. Uh, bilang chair ng Senate Committee on Women, Children, Family Relations, and Gender Equality na nag ng mga kaso ng human trafficking papuntang Syria, uh, dalawang taon ng nakalilipas hanggang ngayon sa Myanmar at sa uh, Cambodia sa iba't ibang sirkumstansya 100% ko po sinusuportahan ang paghingi uh, ng gentlewoman ng pag-imbestiga ng Senado dito sa aspetong ito rin at saan mang mga komite ito ma-refer isa po ako sa mga miyembro ng Senado na aktibong lalahok at susuporta sa kanila. Thank you, doon. madam. Salamat kaayo, Mr. President. Thank you, Risa. Senator Risa. And just for the record, uh, this is not just an immoral act, an ethical act. It's an illegal act because we have immigration laws. They're in violation of laws. So illegal po ang ginawa nila. It's an illegal act, and therefore they must be punished, exposed, and punished. Uh, we have uh, next to. Uh, Manifest is, I think, the Senator Lauren and then Senator Robinot Padilla. Yes, Mr. President, our Senate President, Pro Tempore. Uh, as the Senate President said, I uh, 
would like to associate myself with the thoughts of our sponsor, Senator Poe, because really it is disgusting that this happens in our country. Ngayon lang po nahuli at naalam. Ganong kadalas na kaya nangyayari ito at ito ba'y isang practice na na kumikita at kurap ang mga tao at sino kaya yung mga taong tinatraffic sa dinadala at anong mga kalakal na mga dala nita. Kaya wag po natin uh, papabayaan na hindi malalaman kung bakit. I asked Senator Poe what the reason was of the what uh, of the immigration head and the AMIA head, but as of now to date she says that there is no response yet. I cannot imagine how 24 hours or even 1 hour would pass that uh, the heads of the agencies or the institutions would have nothing to say about an illegal act. So, at the proper time, I would join the hearing, and I appreciate Senator Poe's uh, bringing this um, disgusting uh, corruption, it's more than corruption, this illegal act um, to the Senate. So, thank you, Mr. President. Yes, thank you. Uh, we'd like to recognize a distinguished colleague, Senator Robin Hood Padilla. Maraming salamat po, uh, Ginoong Pangulo. Uh, ako po ay gusto ko lamang po din na uh, sundan ang uh, pagsuporta po ng aking mga kasamang silador dito po sa binigay na talumpati ng ating magiting na at uh, dugo ng hari ng pelikulang Pilipino, uh, Senator Grace po. Uh, uh, ang mahal na uh, Pangulo, Gusto ko lamang pong uh, iparating po sa inyong atensyon ang isang mga bagay na nakalulungkot po sapagkat narinig ko po kayo dyan mismo na inyo pong uh, pinalalakas, pinagaganda, nakikiusap po kayo sa media na pagandahin ang ating imahe. Eh, nakakalungkot po na taga-gobyerno pa, kasama pa natin sa gobyerno, ang siyang gumagawa ng mga ganito na nagbibigay po ng napakapangit na, na lalo na po pag pinag-usapan ang airport o ports natin, ibig sabihin eh, masyado tayong nagiging maluwag sa mga ganitong usapin. Katulad po ng sinabi nyo, mahal na ginoong Pangulo, papano yung mga kriminal? na malayang malaya na papasok sa at lalabas sa ating bansa eh pagka inugnay po natin ito sa sinasabi natin gusto natin mag-attract ng uh, negosyo, mag-attract eh nakakasira po ito. Kaya sana po uh, Ginoong Pangulo sa kapangyarihan po ng Senado at uh, sa pamumuno po ni Senator Bato de la Rosa pagdating po na sa kanyang committee nito Sana po talaga makakita tayo, katulad po ng sinabi ng ating mahal na senadora, uh, Lauren Ligarda, makakita naman po tayo talaga ng mga ulong gugulong dito. Kasi lagi na lang po tayo yung uh, uh, nagkakaroon ng pagdinig, pero wala pa po tayong nakikita talaga kung sino ba talaga. Sana po sa pagkakataong ito, merong talagang managot, meron po talagang maparusahan, At makita po talaga nitong mga talipandas ng mga taong ito na ginagamit ang ating uh, mga nasa gobyerno at uh, sinusuhulan, eh makita naman po nila talaga kung ano ang tibay at tatag ng ating pagkapilipino. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat sa aking kapatid, uh, Senator Robert Padilla. At you know, gusto ko lang uh, sabihin po sa ating mga kababayan, na ating mga kasamaan sa Senado, pwede natin silang arestuin. Bakit hindi? We have done it in the past under the Blue Ribbon Committee of Chairman Gordon. If Senator Bato de la Rosa sees that they are, they are not cooperating with investigation, we may have them arrested. I'll just look at my legal team. Nandito po sila. But it is within the powers of the Senate to hold them in contempt. Kung ayong arrestuhin ng ibang ahensya ng gobyerno, ang Senado mag-aaresto sa kanila. Inis na inis na po tayo. Nandiyan naman si General Angkan. ay excited na excited na gamitin yung kanya mga training na ginagawa ng mga USA sa nakarang ilang linggo na. So, yes, we'd like to uh, recognize Senator Ruiz and Senator Wynne Gachalian after. Salamat kaayo, Mr. President. I apologize for not including this in my brief manifestation earlier. 
meron lang po kaming uh, kino-confirm. So, uh, just a brief additional manifestation. Kapag po dininig na nung komite or mga komite kung kanino ito i-refer, uh, gusto ko lang po i-clarify kay Sen Grace kung yung pangalan uh, nung flight provider ay global o globan. Kasi po kung the latter, kung globan, ang isang magiging tanong ko po sa pagdinig ay, could this be the same globan flight provider that attempted to smuggle uh, Mohit and Twinkle Dargani out of the country opo, at the height of the formerly investigation. Mm -hmm. Dahil kung initial lamang na mga uh, Google research at yung pagbalik po sa um, mga dokumento uh, nung uh, naunang uh, Blue Ribbon Committee investigation, nung formally, mayroon pong nag-figure doon na globan. So, sinasabi po ng good gentlewoman from Pangasinan at Iloilo, it is Globan, letter N, uh, November. So same, is it the same company? Mr. President. So, apparently, it is the same company, Mr. President. For the wow. record po, para lang po maitanong uh, pa, maiimbestiga pa po sa pagdinig. Salamat ka ayo, Mr. Mahilig President. Mahilig pala sila magpuslit at magpalabas ng mga, ano ha? Mukhang, Mr. President, Mukhang... hindi lang naiya ang in the hot seat pa rin, tulad ng sinabi ng good gentlewoman, baka ito ring entity Globan po na ito. Dagan sa Salamat, Mr. President. Maybe we should ban Globan from entering the Philippines. <laughs> Senator, uh, may we recognize uh, Senat, uh, Senator uh, Risa really quickly. Uh, Senator Gatchalian, I think he just wants to uh, add. Uh, Senator Grace, rather. No, uh, they want to add to this. Thank statement. you, Mr. President. Uh, with the indulgence of Senator Gatchalian, just a quick answer. That was the question, and I want to put it on record that it's Globan with an N. So, now, Unless there are two Globans, then we assume that it's the same company. And uh, maybe we should check if that Globan is really in the business of smuggling people out of the country. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Mr. Yes, uh, dear colleague. Yes, Mr. The President. Permanent Committee on Ways and Means, Senator. Mr. President, I just want to associate myself to the privileged speech of the good uh, gentle lady uh, from Pangasinan, Senator Grace Po. And... Uh, at the proper time, I'll be joining the uh, hearing as well. Uh, Mr. President, ito po yung kinakatakutan ho natin. No? Uh, sabi nga ni uh, Majority Floor, yung mga VVVVIP, kaya na nilang bilin yung ating mga otoridad. No? Bureau of Immigration, uh, PNP, uh, all the enforcers. At uh, kung ganyan po ang mangyayari, saan na ho tayo tatakbo? Wala na po tayong pwedeng puntahan. Kaya napakaganda pong uh, nailabas po to at makita. Dahil hindi po ito hihinto hanggat meron tayong mga ganitong uh, uh, kriminal na nasa bansa po natin na ginagamit ang pera para makontrol ang otoridad at mga enforcers po natin. At uh, kailangan po may managot. Kung hindi po, hindi natin makikita na hihinto to at tuloy-tuloy po mangyayari to sa ating sariling bansa. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much, Senator Gatchalian. Uh, Senator uh, Bato Del Ross. Is Just a brief re rejoinder doon sa statement ni Senator Wynne Gatchalian, Mr. President. Hindi <clears throat> uh, po kasama ang PNP doon sa discarte na yun. Uh, airport police po ang involved doon, hindi PNP. Ha? Oh. PNP ang nakahuli. Ang PNP ang gustong pigilan na hindi makalipad. So, for this particular instance, the PNP is the hero, yeah, not the villain, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Very clear. As I mentioned earlier, I congratulated the PNP Aviation Command. I stand corrected, Mr. President, and I apologize to uh, the gentleman from Davao del Sur for that uh, uh, inadvertent uh, mistake. But my point there is the authorities, no, in general. We, we see that in many, many uh, branches of government. And let Let's call it. Let's call it the spade. Let's call it. Let's call the spade the spade. And uh, we see that in the Bureau of Immigration. We see that in Bureau of Customs. We see that in many of the branches of our government. And that's what we are trying to resolve. But hindi hinto, Mr. President. No, every in my six years here in the Senate, uh, almost every month, may ganito pong uh, story tayong naririnig. Almost every month, meron tayong recommendations. Pero almost every month, oh, meron pa rin but nevertheless, we cannot stop. We have to continue our work and we have to bring this out uh, to the open so that 
uh, in our own way, we can stop uh, abuses from happening here within our shores, Mr. President. Thank you. But I apologize to uh, uh, the gentleman from uh, Davao del Sur for that, uh, um, for that error, Mr. President. Thank you. You know, one recourse is, of course, we cite them in contempt. This, uh, we have them in the hearings. They promise to do better. They do not do better. Then we cite them in contempt. Then we arrest any general. We'll come out with the order if you wish. Uh, we have uh, our two colleagues in the back with Senator uh, Jingoy. Uh, yes, we recognize Senator Jingoy Strada, after which Senator Robin Padilla. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I would like to associate myself with the uh, privileged speech made by our esteemed colleague, uh, Senator Grace Paul. And uh, with the able uh, leadership of uh, Senator Bato, who is uh, going to investigate this uh, particular pro problem, I think that uh, the heads will roll. And I know uh, Senator Bato very well. He is uh, very capable of uh, investigating this uh, particular pr problem. At meron nga tayong kasabihan, let the axe fall where it may fall. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much, sir, distinguished colleague. Senator Robin Padilla. Uh, si Senator... Hindi po nag-raise ng hands si Senator. Okay po, sorry po. Mahal na ginawang Pangulo. Kasi ito pong aking gagawin ay singit lang po ito. Pasensya na po kayo. On the same topic po? Or? Uh, ma malapit na malapit po. Malapit okay, po. na malapit po sapagkat uh, reputasyon po ng inang bayan ang pinag-uusapan dito, ginawang Pangulo. Alam niyo po, Uh, pagka tayo, pag pinag-uusapan natin ang bayan natin at yung di mga diferensya, okay lang yan. Kasi trabaho po natin yun, ginoong Pangulo. Pero pagka ibang bansa na po ang bumabanat sa atin, hindi po dapat tayo pumapayag. Katulad po, may, may ganap, may ganap po, ginoong Pangulo, na isang pelikula ang ipinalabas. Isang pelikula po ang title ay uh, plain. Ang bida po rito ay si Gerard Butler. Ang istorya po nito, ginawang Pangulo, sila po ay nag-crash. Sa Sulu. Sa Sulu. Sa Hulo. Jolo daw, Jolo. Opa. <laughs> Alam niyo Malipa. po, napaka, Malipa. napakasakit lang po. Napanood niyo po pala. Hindi ko pinanood. Ah, opo. Alam ko lang kasi may, may nagsabi sa akin Napanood ko lang yung trailer. Pinakita ko po sa ating mahal na Pangulo yan. Together Opo. with the DOT secretary, talagang in shock po sila doon sa trailer. At uh, of course, uh, we should send our regrets. Bakit na dapat as a, as, a, as, a, as a nation, we should also send our regrets that this is not the real situation on the ground. Hindi Opo. po ganun ang situation on the ground. Na, na, na iduktong ko po kasi eh, dahil dito sa kanilang pelikula, sinasabi, ang ating pong otoridad ay naduwag na sa mga rebelde. Hindi na po sila umaaksyon. At sinabi pa dito, they went down, English po ito, they went down somewhere in the Hulo Island cluster. It's run by separatists and militias. The Filipino armies weren't there anymore. Ayos ba English ko, boss? Ayos. Ginoong Pangulo, hindi po natin to dapat tanggapin. Sana po uh, nakikiusap po tayo sa ating uh, MTRCB na sana po sa mga ganitong ganap, kumakatok po tayo sa opisina nila, hindi po dapat ito pinapalabas sa Pilipinas. Dito po dapat sa ating bansa ipinagbabawal ito at kinukondem po natin ito. Maraming salamat po, Ginoong Pangulo. I sympathize with my distinguished gentleman from adopted son from Mindanao. Adopted son ka namin sa Mindanao. I deeply sympathize with you and I agree with you. As a matter of fact, meron pong panibagong pelikula na ilalabas. And this movie is about uh, uh, Heso Cristo, ang ating mahal na Heso Cristo, who is also a prophet in the Quran of, uh, of uh, our Muslim brothers. I saw the the message in the Facebook page of Senator Bato de la Rosa. Let us make it a point na ban natin yan dito kasi it paints our Father Jesus Christ in a bad light in that movie. Ha? Ginawang, uh, hindi ko nasasabihin dito on the record. But I think I personally will lead this, uh, those in the chamber who will feel that we should ban it from being shown in this in our country. It's a disgrace. If those, If there was a a movie that puts Allah, Allah in a 
bad light siguro nagkarebolusyon na doon sa ating mga kapatid na, uh, na Muslim na mga bayan. Uh, we should also stand united when it comes to our, our, our faith. And uh, I don't know the name, I forget the title of the movie, but I'll give in due time a speech about that and ask the MTRCB to ban it from our, our cinemas. Uh, because it paints our, our Father Jesus Christ in a very bad light. Um, so, may we ask the majority leader, we'll have a suspension muna, gentlemen, because I think they're deliberating, the majority, before I, before I suspend, I recognize Senator Bato, they're just deliberating who will be the lead committee, the secondary and the tertiary committee. Thank yes, you. Senator Bato. Thank you, Mr. President. Short uh, manifestation lang regarding the statement of Senator Robin Padilla. Last night, I really watched the movie, Plane, and I was uh, very much disgusted because according to Gerard Butler, <clears throat> they are, uh, they are, uh, they landed, they crash landed somewhere in Davao in uh, southern Philippines <laughs> before, before they were able to, to determine their exact location that was uh, Hulu. Uh, so, they were able to determine their exact location that was Hulu. Yeah, they were Determined as a Jolo. Jolo. But uh, you know, Mr. President, it really painted a bad image sa ating bansa dahil nga Dabao, wala ka makita ang ganong klaseng lugar na may mga rebuildi na ganon ka, ganon katindi na namumugot ng uh, ulo without apparent reason, pinupugutan ng ulo yung mga foreigner. Parang with, through that movie, tinatakot ng mga ng uh, filmmakers na yon yung ating mga mga dayuhan na turista na pumunta dito sa uh, Pilipinas, particularly sa Dabao at sa Hulu Islands. So, but uh, ang naangkuhan ko lang doon, medyo masaya lang ako kunti sa palabas na yung Mr. President dahil nakita nila na yung mga yung mga feeder roads pala, yung mga Ilkak roads na ginawa doon sa Mindanao, ay pwede palang malalandingan ng commercial plane at pwede pa mag-take off doon yung... Uh, Hindi ko na panood yung pelikula sa ito. Yung kaya, kaya yun lang ang positive point ko doon nakita. Na, and I want to put on record, since we had passed the Bang Samoro Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao, together with all of you here, magkasama tayo lahat yan. Yes. Uh, you were Chief PNP, uh, Visa, Senator Visa, Senator Coco was the Senate President, I was the sponsor, Senator JV was there. Senator, our Angkati Kapatid, Senator uh, Pedilla was uh, full in full support and joined many rallies in favor of that uh, together with our Senator uh, uh, Tulfo who said nice things about the peace process when he was still in journalism as a journalist. Alam nyo po, iba na, iba na ang Mindanao, napakatahimik. I go to Kamigin with my family with no security. I go around the malls in Iligan. On my own, I go, we go to Dabao, Bukidnon Road, very safe. Kaya inis na inis ako pag pinapakita nila. Ang ganda ganda pa naman ng Hulo, ng Sulu, ng Basilan, ng Tawi-Tawi. It's, it's a magical place. Kaya nung pinalabas yan, ayoko talaga panuri yan eh. I really said I will not watch this kasi uh, baka matamaan ako ng high blood. I was, pinakita ko na po ito uh, two, three months ago kay Presidente. And I complained to him, we have to do something about it. Alam po ni ES yan. Because I was in Malacanang when I showed it to Executive Secretary Luke Bersamin, together with NEDA Secretary Balisakan, and uh, isa pa, tu Tourism Secretary. At uh, talagang we are at aghast. <laughs> Nagulat kami na ang tao, malalaman ng tao, Pilipinas na naman yan. Di naman nila alam kung saan sulok yan eh. Sabihin nila, Pilipinas yan, magulo. I said, uh, this really is going to push us backwards in our tourism promotions again. Kaya, I join you in condemning this movie. And in particular, maybe we can come up with a resolution, uh, maybe in say, saying that uh, this paints a wrong picture of the Philippines. Hindi ganito ang Pilipinas ngayon. At napakabait ng Pilipino, whether Muslim man o Kristiyano, sila po ay peace-loving uh, people, or peace-loving people. So, thank you. Marami Mr. President, before we go on break, um, Senator Rafi Tulpo would uh, wish to be recognized. Yes, our distinguished uh, gentleman, Senator Rafi Tulpo, our idol, who exposes and supports this exposure of this uh, uh, malfeasance, misfeasance, and uh, unethical illegal activities. Uh, we would like to recognize you, sir.
Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, yung topic kanina, nakikinig lamang ako at uh, dito may kita na may problema tayo sa national security, uh, lalo na doon sa uh, human trafficking na kung saan may nakalusot daw ng mga Chinese na um, sasakay ng isang uh, uh, private, private, private plane. plane. So, ang tanong sana doon, sino ang ground handler? At uh, sino po yung nag-schedule ng arrival and departure ng chartered flight na yon? Yun po talaga may problema doon. And uh, yung mga taga na iya, uh, rinig ko ata sabi ni Chip Bato, bitayin, tama lang, I agree with Chip Bato, dapat yun ang bibitayin yung mga taga Mia and uh, of course yung Absicom uh, dapat baguhin na po talaga natin Mr. President yung sistema ng security doon and time and time again even while I was still a broadcaster I've been saying that na napaka weak po ng ating uh, seguridad dyan sa airport uh, marami na mga insidente mga nakalusot ng mga Chinese uh, from China uh, yung iba and, uh, later on uh, nagjo-join sa Abu Sayyaf Uh, yung iba mga drug dealers. So, uh, kailangan talaga siguro strengthen natin yung security dyan sa NIA, Mr. President. Pero, pero for now, uh, siguro dapat habuli natin yung ground handler uh, doon sa uh, arrive, scheduling and arrival ng departure and ng chartered flight na yon. So, siguro, Mr. President, Yes, we, we will take note of that. And we will uh, uh, make sure that that information is uh, extracted during the committee hearings. I hope I'm sure you will be attending that. I'm sure. Thank you, Mr. President. And then, siguro kailang makasuwan at makulong. Tama. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, I totally agree with you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. I totally. Agree. Thank you, Mr. President. We, we thank the gentle lady from Pangasinan, Senator Grace Mo, for bringing this into our attention. Actually, Mr. President, President before we end, if you know, uh, in, in the Netflix, no, there's a movie, yung pong The Big Boss. Um, It was a true to life, I think it's a true, true story wherein uh, it's a big international syndicate operating in the Philippines because they said that in the country, in the Philippines, you can pay off the law, the authorities, the PNP, the government officials, elected and uh, uh, appointed officials, and uh, the courts. So they, are, they have been uh, operating here. No? They're involved in gun running. Uh, human trafficking, prostitution, drugs, everything. So, Mr. President, I think it's really a clear and present danger that, that I think the Senate will really have to do its uh, function, oversight function to make sure that these agencies are uh, uh, performed uh, at par. Thank you, Mr. President. With that, Mr. President, we call for a minute suspension. Yeah, we call for a minute suspension to allow our majority floor leader to determine which uh, are the appropriate committees. Session suspended.
President, with the permission of the body, I move that we refer the privileged speech of Senator Grace Po and all the interpolations and manifestations there on to the uh, Committee on Accountability and Pub of Public Officers and uh, Investigations, or the Blue Ribbon Committee of the Senate as the primary committee, and the Committee on uh, Public Order as secondary committee and Public Service Committee as tertiary committee. So move, Mr. President. Well, with the permission of the body and all members present, motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we proceed with the additional reference of business. Please proceed with the additional reference of business. Is there being no objection? Sir, the additional reference of business. Message of the President of the Philippines. Letter of His Excellency President Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos Jr., dated 15 February 2023, certifying to the necessity of the immediate enactment of Senate Number 1849 entitled. Anak amending sections 2, 6, 10, 11, and 15 of RA 11709, otherwise known as an act strengthening professionalism and promote, promoting the continuity of policies and modernization initiatives in the armed forces of the Philippines by prescribing fixed terms for key officers thereof, increasing the mandatory retirement age of generals, flag officers, providing for a more effective attrition system and providing funds therefore. To further enhance policies and initiatives towards maintaining a responsive and professional armed forces of the Philippines. To refer to the Committee on Rules. Mr. President, I move for a minute suspension. Session suspension. Thank you, Mr. President.
and upon the uh, request from the office of Senator Sani Angara with conformity from the chairperson of the Committee on Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship, Senator Mark Villar, I move to transfer the primary referral of Senate Bill No. 319, the uh, Domestic Bidders Preference Act from the Committee on Finance to the Committee on Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship while transferring its secondary referral from the Committee on Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship to the Committee on Finance. I so move, Mr. President. There being objections to the motion. Motion is approved. Mr. President, um, pursuant to Section 18 of the Rules of the Senate and upon the instruction of uh, the Chairperson of the Committee on Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship, Senator Mark Villar, may I manifest for the record the inclusion of Senate Bill Numbers 319, this is the Domestic Bidders Preference Act, and 1868, the Protected Geographical Indications Act, in the Committee on Trade Subcommittee chaired by Senator Sani Angaras. I so manifest, Mr. President. There being no objection to the motion, motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for a minute suspension. Maybe the chairpersons are all right. The session suspend. Uh, session resume. Resume. I indeed. Monday, February 20. Sir President, at this juncture, I move that we adjourn session until. Monday, February 20, 2023, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I so move, Mr. President. There being no objection, the chair hearing none, session is adjourned until 3 o'clock on the afternoon of Monday, February 20, 2023. Have a pleasant good evening, everyone.